Hey everybody and welcome, welcome to the show. First episode of Let's Talk Paranormal. Let's just talk paranormal. Um, tonight I have a special guest. Tonight on here I have, hey Jen. I am starting tonight with a very special guest. Um, Rob Demarest from Ghost Hunters International and a very, very good show, Hauntings in Australia. Oh my god, I've been waiting to get Rob on the radio. Um, so I'm just waiting on Rob to come in and stuff like that. I want to thank everybody that's tuning in. Um, so we are on air. This is the first show I've done in a long time. Um, with uh, paranormal stuff, and um, dying to see who else is going to be doing this stuff um, with me, um, and some of the guests that I'll be having. Um, if anybody can see Rob out there, let him know that I am on air waiting for him. Um, so it's going to be a good evening. I hope we have a good evening here. We're going to discuss a lot of things, everything from ghost hunting to depression and some other things we were talking about Rob and I were talking about today because um, we want to we want to bring you guys a little bit of everything tonight um, and show you guys exactly what we do so if someone could get a hold of Rob just say hey Eric's waiting for you on the, on the thing um, I'm just waiting on him it'd be great So, so you guys don't know a little bit about me. Um, I work with a team called Haunted in New England in New Hampshire. Uh, we are on Amazon Prime. Uh, we have six episodes on there, so you can watch us on there of our investigations. And one of the main reasons I did get into this field was because of Rob. Um, because of his genuine um, liking of stuff and his knowledge in the paranormal field. So, I just invited Rob, oh, there he is. Let's go live. Okay, let's go. And thank you for everybody that's tuning in so far. So, let me ask you guys, what brought you guys into the paranormal field? What brought you guys into doing what we're doing? Because, um, you know, it's kind of funny because mine were own pers my own personal experiences as a child um, and stuff like that. So, now just waiting for Rob to accept the invitation. Uh, we're waiting here. Um, when I was a child, I went to the house of uh, Seven Ghouls. Oh, there he is. There's the man, the myth, and the legend. There's Rob. Oh, it looks like me. Looks like you. I can see you perfectly. Hold on. i got to get this thing stationed. All right. Oh, much better. There we go. Hey, guys. We are here with Rob from Ghost Hunters International and Haunting Australia. Did I get the name right? Haunting in, Haunting Australia? Yes, you did get the name correct. Um, also, I would like to say that I was featured on Telemundo, Univision, Seekers of Malaysia, Destination Truth, Ghost Hunters, and Ghost Hunters Live. Now, I, now let me ask you this, um, Rob. Let's get into the meat of it. Now, a lot of people talk about your first... First two seasons, I believe, with Ghost Hunters International, and they kind of asked me, and they, they, one of the questions they kept asking me today was, "Ask Rob why he left the show." Uh, I didn't leave the show. There was a parting of the ways, and that's all I can say about that. Nope, I totally understand that. I understand that. Um, 
One of the things about the show that I didn't like, Rob, was the bloodletting, the episode with the bloodletting that they had on there. That was not one of my favorite episodes. Yeah, that was after my time. Hi, Kim. Um, that was after my time. Hi, Amy Green. Hi, Peter. Hi, Jade. Um, hey, Lita Brown. Hi, David Child. I'm going to spend the whole show just saying hi to everybody. Hi, Megna. <laughs> hi, Amy Elaine. Um, hi, Nicole Ortiz. But no, the, um, yeah, from Mumbai, India, we, and from Geelong, Australia. So as far as the bloodletting went, you know, I saw people say, well, if Rob was there, he wouldn't have let that happen. Yeah, I would have. You know what I mean? Like, what was that? Anyway, the, um, the thing with the bloodletting, yeah, it wasn't everyone's cup of tea, but they, they tried to do something different. And, and, you know, so be it. So, Rob, tell me, what was some of the, your favorite cases that you investigated with GHI? GHI, man. Um, Clark Air Force Base in the Philippines. Um, what was the name of the, the Port Arthur Penitentiary in Australia? Um, Wolf Shanza in Poland, where Hitler spent. Um, hi, Dave. Hi, Serenity. Hi, Amy. Hi, Kathleen. <laughs> hi, Patty. Um, yo, how do you not the show just saying hi to everybody uh, i'm doing it i'm doing it you're doing it really well because you're ignoring everybody hi maria um <laughs> robbie strickland what's going on robbie great dude all right so um i said jade once said that i loved india and that's absolutely true um you know one of my best friends in the world garab Tiwari, started really brought the paranormal over to india um, I was. I actually forgot to mention that I was on Z News for three episodes. Hi, Michelle Vance. Um, I was actually on three episodes of Z News in India investigating. Hi, Elaine. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Tina. Um, and why Clark Air Force Base was a favorite? Um, there's a, there is a story, but I'm not going to tell. It. Okay. Okay. Now. What's your what's your thoughts on when you hear people talk about demons and poltergeists? We were just talking about that. What's up, Scott? Scott, you're the man. I owe you one. You know that. Um, we were just talking about demons and all that, and I think that demons have become more of like a hot topic because it kind of sounds cooler than ghosts, right? Like right. It's not just a ghost in my place. It's a demon. Man, shut up. Like, just because you want to sound like it, it's more extreme. You know what? Yo, you remember that? Back in the day where everything became extreme. Wasn't there a show, Extreme Ghost Hunters? Sure there was. I started a beef with them now. But isn't that called uh, Ghost Adventures now? Nah, man. I, I don't. I don't. You know, at the end of the day, here's what I'll say about Ghost Adventures, right? I'm going to say this. Those guys are some good Zag Baggins. I'm calling you out right now. You are a fantastic businessman. And that's all I got to say about that. Well, see, we don't hold any, I'm not going to hold any punches here, you know, with, with that show. Because I've watched it from the beginning to then. And I got to say, I've watched Ghost Hunters, Ghost Hunters International, and Ghost Hunters Academy. And Ghost Hunters International was downright my favorite. Yeah, it was the best one. My favorite was um, Dracula's Castle. Oh, you mean the real Dracula's Castle? Yeah. Not, not Bronze Castle that everyone oh. thinks claims yeah. is Dracula's Castle? Yeah, yeah. that was... The funny thing about Dracula's Castle Investigation is it looks a lot bigger on the show. The reality is that place is only like the size of my little ass living room in this apartment. It's tiny. <laughs> um, so they did a great job making it look much bigger than it was. Um, so there you go. Like, you know, and I see a lot of the, the, the comments being made. Um, look, if you enjoy the show Ghost Adventures, cool. Good for you. 
If you watch Ghosts of Shepherdstown, if you watch Ghost Brothers, enjoy, man. Like, listen, people watch TV as escapism. You know what I mean? If you want to do the real deal, go go take your cell phone to a haunted house with one of your friends and do an EVP session, right? If you want to like do, like watch, just relax for a little bit. Watch whatever you want, man. What's up, Kathy? You know, I watch I watch Ghost Brothers. I loved them. They they make me laugh. Um, yep. That was one of my favorite shows. And you know, I watch Ghost Brothers. I watch Mountain Monsters. Alaska Mountain Monsters, different shows like that. They've all caught my attention. But when I see stuff you can see that's scripted in the show, you kind of take a step back. So was there ever any scripting when it came to GHI? It, it, it's weird when you say scripting, right? Because when, when you say, first of all, um, I'm going to get back to that question, but I want to say Johnny Brennan... Johnny Brennan, now, if you don't know that name, that's Johnny Brennan from the Jerky Boys, also known as one of the big voice actors on Family Guy, is watching the chat right now. So if you want to talk about a real celebrity, you got a real celebrity watching this chat. Now I feel like I'm under pressure. Now I got to do a better job. So is there some scripting? Yeah, of course there is. Nobody says, like, hey, we need you guys to say this and say that, right? Um, I got the whole thing is, at the end of the day, you know, like if we went to Dracula's castle, uh, what's up, Sam? Uh, Sam's in the chat too. But if we go to Dracula's castle and they're telling us, oh, hey, guys, we're going to Dracula's castle. We already knew we were going to Dracula's castle. So is that scripted? Nah, not really. You know what I mean? My, my rule was this, right? If I did an investigation, you know, I would say from the time we start the investigation till the time the investigation ends, leave us alone, man. Let us do our thing. We don't, we don't, we, they didn't tamper with the evidence. And here's one for the record, because people get accused of this, that, and the other. Never. And the Rob means never, ever asked, at least me personally, I was never, ever asked to fake anything, to make things more exciting. What's up, Jason Musgrove, um, my boy from Texas? I was never asked that stuff. You know what I mean? Like, so all these people who say, oh, well, they must have told you you can't say this and you can't. Nope. They just never requested it. So how much did um, Jason and Grant have in a say with GHI? I w that's a good question for the production company. Um, I, I really don't know. You know, whether, whether they had any say in it, I guess. I mean, I don't know what they would say. Like, we want them to go to Spain. You know what I mean? Like, when, when we had new cast members join the show... It wasn't people coming from, you know, Ghost Hunters until, you know, Britt and Chris Williams joined the show later on. So, so what did Barry bring to the show that was different from what you were bringing? Because you seem, you both seem the same kind of people. Barry, Barry Fitzgerald, you know, I mentioned Barry the other day. Um, Barry and I don't always see eye to eye and, you know, that's that's what happens with everybody, right? There's nobody that you agree with 100% um, of the time with. I think Barry, man, I'm trying to think of, of the right way to say it. I think Barry brought a lot of experience, a lot of new ideas, um, a lot of willingness to try new things to the show. Now, you've been all over the world. What is the one place, one country that you've never investigated that you would love to investigate? There's two, actually. Um, Japan and Russia. I would love to do some locations in Japan and Russia. Um, I don't think I'm going to get to do them. You know, that's just not going to happen, you know, just financially. You know what I mean? Like, you have to, you need money for these trips. Um, 
David Reed Christine, uh, I'm sorry if I mispronounced, says, Rob, he doesn't know who I am. Shannon Sylvia was the best on the show. Um, I was the lead investigator on the show, and Shannon was fantastic as well. So there you go. You know, it, listen, man, people get upset. Like, I like this one. I, I didn't like this one. That's cool. That went on TV, and the goal of TV is to entertain you. If you didn't like me or you didn't like Barry or you didn't like Dustin or whoever or you love Dustin and you love Brandy, somebody said they love Brandy, that's all good, man. I'm not mad at you. Like, I get it. That's how TV works. I understand. I understand. Was there anybody that you had maybe had a disagreement with on the show that was never seen? Yeah, quite a few. Not quite a few. Um, I can think of three incidents that that you know there was some some serious debate quote unquote okay okay now here in the states what places have you investigated here in the united states most of my investigations um come out of florida because that's where i live um i've investigated in connecticut i've done gettysburg i've done places in california um you name it, I've done a lot of places. But mainly what I do now is, because if you investigate the, the, the same place quite a bit, um, there's a tendency to get bored, but you get a feel for the place. And when you start experimenting with gear, you, you have, a, you have a, a baseline to work off of. Now, do you think that people are overdoing some of these locations, well-known locations like Waverly Hills, um, Trans Allegheny, stuff like that? I don't know if you can. You know, I guess it depends on the spirits. Somebody had just asked if I am drunk. No, uh, not drinking, so nice try. The background noise, I hear that hum too, so I don't know what that's about. Um, I think people are surprised that I talk this much. People that haven't met me in person, they watch me on GHI, and they're used to me saying, Hey guys, let's get those lights out. Hey guys, let's get those lights back on. And they're not used to me talking this much, but no, I talk quite a bit. Um, now, now I've noticed that you've become like very inspirational to a lot of people lately in what you're posting, um, especially about depression and stuff like that. Do you mind getting into a little bit about that? No, actually, today is Mental Health Awareness Day, so it's a great day to kind of, kind of touch on that. Um, a lot of people in my family have suffered and continue to suffer from anxiety. Um, myself, personally, I know I do. There's also issues with depression. And, and the way that things work here, especially in America, right, it's a real sad thing. If, you, if I go, hey, Eric, I broke my leg. You'd be like, oh, man, I'm so sorry to hear that. That's awful. That's really terrible, man. I hate to hear about something like that. I come to you and I go, hey, Eric, you know, it turns out I have generalized anxiety disorder. All of a sudden, you're like, whoa, all right, man, like, good luck with that. Like, it's catchy. You know what I mean? Mental illness and, and problems with your brain chemistry are not catching. It's not the chicken pox. So people out there... If you have anxiety, if you got depression, do not let society try and like treat you as if you're some outcast. You know, I mean, the brain is an amazing machine. But how many times have you seen your really expensive computer have an error? Right? So our brains misfire, they have errors too. So, like I said, if you if you got anxiety or depression, do not make let people make you feel less about yourself because of it. So that's my take on that. Now you helped me out quite a bit, and I'll let the people know you got you helped me out a lot when you talked to me about my depression when I was going through it, and you told me to stand strong. Many people were saying, "Oh, just suck it up, deal with it," but you took the time and talked to me. Um, sending me little voice clips and stuff like that. That actually helped me go and get the help I needed when I had my breakdown. So I thank well, you. Well, here's, here's something people got to remember. There, there's, you know, there, there's probably, and I know Ed Modestino, Dr. Ed is in is here, and, and 
you know, a great person to reach out to. If, if people, Ed Modestino, if you want to look him up, you know, he knows quite a bit about this stuff. He, he's the man. But here's something that people got to remember is that depression passes. But when you're in the midst of depression, it doesn't seem like it, right? Like, it seems like that dark cloud is never going to get pushed out of your way again. You know, but the reality is that it will. And, and you are going to be okay. You are going to get up tomorrow. And I posted something the other day, and this is, this is something real basic. Let me give um, two basic ones. One, if you're having a bad day or you're suffering from depression, this is not going to be a fix-all, but it can help. Count the good things that happen during your day. And I don't mean I got a new job. I mean I found my car keys after only looking for 30 seconds. That's a good thing. Concentrate on those little good things. And you know what? Sooner or later, you're going to start saying, man, things don't seem so bad. Um, the other thing that I would say about anxiety, and I read this, I didn't make this up, is ground yourself. When you're feeling anxious, you know, my worst thing used to be, I don't know why, well, it actually was triggered because of a flight um, over Peru where we started going down. I thought we were going to crash. I thought I was going to die. Um, but here's what you do. Use your senses. You look around and you say five things you can touch. I can touch the arm of this chair, right? I can touch this table. I can touch that soda can. Things you can smell. Thank God I don't smell anything. Because I'd be worried if I, even my candle that's burning, I don't smell it. But ground yourself. Look around. You know what I mean? Start mm -hmm. looking for basic stuff. Feel texture. And trust me, believe it or not, it works. The, the anxiety will start to pass. You know, and, and a lot of people, like I said before, man, the biggest problem is this. I see a lot of people who know what I'm talking about is that they don't want to say it. They don't want to come out and say, hey, I've got anxiety. Because people are going to say, oh, man up. Oh, I, I thought you were, you were stronger than that. Shoot. I will bench press more than almost anybody most people know. I leg press over a 1,000 pounds. And no matter how strong I make my muscle. That does not make me strong enough to beat anxiety. You know what I mean? So, so it's not a question of being tough or being strong. It's a question of saying, I'm going to figure out a way to, to improve myself. I am going to figure out a way to beat this. You know what I mean? I'm, not, I'm going to fight this battle and I'm going to win. And it may be a lifetime battle. I can't say like, Man, I, I don't have anxiety anymore. I got too too tough for that. No. And there's days where I wake up and I don't feel right. I feel depressed. You know what I mean? I don't feel good. But that comes with life, man. So what you do is you say, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Here's the deal. All those people you see when you go outside, they're dealing with that stuff too. They just won't admit it. Like I said, don't be ashamed of that kind of stuff. And for all you people who are trying to hate, I ain't scared of when it comes to ghost hunting. I'll ghost hunt anywhere, everywhere, the darkest places, by myself, and I ain't scared of nothing. So, so having anxiety doesn't make you cowardly. It makes you human. So that, that, that's my touch on that. Wow, that that was a uh, an eye opener, um, to say the least. You you brought attention to something with depression and everything else. Um, I do have some questions that are going on in the chat area. Um, Elaine wanted to know what was your most intense experience. I mean, there was a real intense one with myself and Joe Chin, and it was funny because nothing else. And people made fun of me because. Um, I said, can you make a noise? And there was a huge bang right behind me. It didn't sound as loud on TV. And I put my fists up, and everyone's like, oh, what did you think you were going to do? Punch a ghost? Me, 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 me. 
No, I did not think I was going to punch a ghost. It's ask anyone who's ever startled me. You know, I go into a defensive stance if I get startled. And people think, oh, because you're trying to be a badass. And I ain't trying to be nothing but me. All I'm trying to do in this world is be the best me that I can be and nothing more. That, I'll say this, that, that's incredible. That's incredible. Now, what, how can I put this? What would, you know, take you to make you run out of a building? What would take you to nothing. get out of a building if something scared nothing. you? Nothing. Nothing. No. Have I mean, you ever I mean, seen? I, but that's that's kind of talking trash, isn't it? Because I can say nothing yet, right? But if right. all of a sudden some scary, amazing ghost comes charging at me, you never know. You know what I mean? Like I, I might hightail it. I've never ran in my life. You know, I always say, listen. I'm 285 pounds. If you run somewhere, I am way too lazy. Ghost's going to have to pick me up and carry me out the building because I am not moving 285 pounds for much. Now, who got hurt the worst on the show uh, during your time there? Who got injured the worst during an investigation? Good question. Um... Nothing comes to mind, honestly. It wasn't, I mean, I know that Dustin Perry, when he was on Ghost Hunters, got knocked on his butt. But um, nothing that comes to mind, honestly. Like, we didn't have people getting scratched. I mean, I saw, I did see, and, and someone asked, also asked, what's the most um, activity? There's a place in Australia, um, Beechworth Mental Asylum. This was not on TV. We did an event there after haunting Australia. If you live in Australia, Beechworth Mental Asylum is crazy haunted. It really is. And I I saw Gaurav Tuari get punched in the head there. He, trip. he just went like pitching forward and he said something just punched me in the head. And the way I've seen people in real life get punched in the back of the head, that's how he moved. Like, you know, so so that's on, on GHI, I didn't really see, you know, I could be wrong. I could have, I'll tell you, oh, I'll take that back. There was a location we did um, in Romania, and they had little tables placed all over the room, right? Um, and I was walking into them, Andy was walking into them, Barry was, and it's funny as hell because it was pitch dark, and you just kept hearing, like, mother. <laughs> oh my it was just bleeps everywhere because my shins were like bleeding from walking into these things that had nothing to do with ghosts but damn that hurt man and especially where it was catching me right like because i'm a tall dude right where it was catching me right on the bone i i kicked that thing like four times oh and another time here's another one for you um catacombs in paris he asked me about Barry. Barry don't like mannequins. So Barry walked around a corner. They had all these mannequins set up. Barry walked around a corner and he saw this mannequin and he jumped sideways backwards. Bye, Dave. Um, Rodney, no, I will not be doing another televised paranormal show. Um, Barry jumped sideways and I laughed my ass off. I could not stop laughing. I had tears coming out of my eyes. And then I, so I was laughing so hard that I didn't notice that the ceiling suddenly dipped and I smashed my head right in there. I swear I thought I would almost knock myself straight out. Now, what is some of the funniest moments that have happened on the show with like Joe Chin or Dustin or one of the other guys? Joe Chin is one of the funniest dudes you ever met. But then the camera goes on and he stops joking around, which is a real shame. What's up, Bill Reed? My man, Bill. Um, you know, I don't, I guess because Joe takes investigating so seriously, if you meet Joe off camera, you'd be like, that dude is hilarious. Um, but on camera, like, he doesn't joke around as much. I mean, we had we had a crazy amount of fun on that show. You know what I mean? It, it was just, it was out of this world. Now, who was the biggest practical joker on GHI? 
Man, that's hard to say. One of the things is my rules, and I didn't have a lot of rules, was don't do jokes during an investigation. And everyone's like, oh, you're a baby. And I said, no, nah, there's a reason for that. Because if you jump out and surprise someone, um, the next time something happens, they're not going to react authentically. You know what I mean? Like they, they'll be like, oh, it's someone messing around. If they hear a sound, they're not going to, they're going to think, oh, somebody's trying to play a joke on me. You know, so, um, Julie, have I used Ouija boards? Yes. There. Hey, gotcha. Um, What's your thoughts on Ouija boards? I, I think that it's funny that some people get so scared of Ouija boards, but these same people will go into a haunted location and say, it's okay to use my energy. You scared of one, but you think the other one's okay? Come on, man. What are some of the rules that you go by when you investigate, Rob? Um, keep it authentic. Don't, don't try and overhype people. I've seen people when they investigate that they want to be like, oh, it's getting cold in here. It's getting dark in here. And they're trying to get everyone hyped up. I don't do that. Um, always keep extra batteries around. One of the things that I do and this is not environmentally friendly, but I change all my batteries on my equipment um, before I start an investigation. I throw them out after the investigation so I don't forget. And the reason being so that people can't say, when I, if I say battery drain, they're gonna say, because you forgot to change the batteries. That's impossible because I change the batteries every time. Somebody asked any tag along spirits, I'll say the same joke I always say, no, American customs are way too tough. They won't even let go sin. Hmm. Now, how, many, how much would you say you guys spent probably on batteries alone during an investigation? Not a ton of money. You know, I mean, like, a lot of people, if you watch GHI and some of the shows I did, a lot of people would use, like, you know, camcorders, which are rechargeable, you know, um... But yeah, man, it, 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 we didn't spend a lot of money on on that kind of thing. No, nah, we're, we're good. Okay, I have another question from here from David. Um, do you believe in shadow people? Yes. Okay, what kind of experience have you had with one? What experience have I had with them? Um, yep. When I was in the Middle East, I saw a shadow move from one um, to the other, hold on one second, what the heck, go ahead, I'm still, okay, um, did, did they take any GHI, GH or GHI, why did they take the, uh, you guys off the air, GHI and uh, GHI. because it was just way too many shows, okay, okay, now, do you think that the shows are starting to die down and the uh, newness of the paranormal is starting to wear off on people? Yeah, I mean, everyone's seen it. Everyone's seen the dark room. Everyone's seen the green, you know, the gr everyone looking green, you know. Everyone kind of gets the idea. And you see a lot of the locations get done over and over and over again. You know, I mean, Eastern State Penitentiary and, and Mansfield Reformatory, you know, they've all been done. Right, right. Now, what part of the country do you like to investigate the most? I do Florida. They're just That's because that's where I live, and, and you know, that's that's home base for me at the moment. So did you take um, a... And no, uh, Tammy, Tammy, I have not watched Rob Lowe's new show. I wish him the best. Did you guys take a direct hit during the hurricane? Yeah, we did. Um, I, we, um, luckily didn't get a lot of damage. Um, you know, I mean, it was bad though. I mean, I still see people taking their shutters down. You think people with depression, anxiety, a deep sense of empathy are more susceptible to experience of the paranormal. I have no idea. I can't, I, I, I don't, I'm not trying to be an advocate, you know, and say, I understand everyone with these symptoms because we're all different. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Now, have you ever investigated in New England? Yes. I've investigated in Connecticut, um, in Dudley Town, 
I mean, I lived there. I lived in Maine. I lived in New York. I lived in Massachusetts, Connecticut. Um, shoot, Vermont. I've lived all over New England, yeah. Uh, Cody, I have never had any demonic encounters that I'm aware of. Okay. Uh, we got, you got a lot of questions coming in, lots of them. Uh, Kitty wants to know, what was your most memorable experience? Um, most memorable experience. I assume we're talking about ghost hunting. Um, yep. Most memorable experience. Now, I really don't know. I really don't know. I mean, some of the EVPs we got along the way, you know, nothing really jumps out at me at the moment. Um, Sam Culp, yeah, I've, I've had plenty of encounters. Well, I think Rob froze there for a second, guys, to stand by. Um, we're going to reconnect. Hold on. Let me try to get Rob back, guys. Yeah, we are having a little technical difficulty because Rob. Give me a second. Here we go. Fighting him back. Sorry about that, guys. The uh, sometimes you know he's in Florida, I'm in New England, so you know, kind of happens. Um, you should be back in a second. I want to thank everybody that's been uh listening tonight. You guys have made this uh show memorable for me tonight. Uh, doing one, um, so we're just waiting on Rob so he can get his connection. Hey, Bill, hey, Jewel, hey, Kathy, hey, Rodney. Um, Rob will be back in a second with that stuff. Um, so what's everyone doing for Halloween this year? What's up your sleeves? What kind of, what you guys got going on? Um, kind of, well, thank you. Um, yeah, we're just waiting on Rob. Probably his phone's probably overheated a little bit. Uh, he'll be right back guys. I promise you he'll be back. Um, this has been an incredible evening. Um, tonight for me to interview one of my idols was Rob and uh, he will be back I'm sorry for the delay and um, he will definitely be back let me try him again hold on folks yeah I think he's got a little connection problem Hold on, guys. Okay, you should be back in a few minutes, guys. Sorry, sorry about that. Um, if you guys have any questions for me, please ask. Uh, love to chat with you guys. Um, this is the first show. Oh, you're welcome, Amy. Hi, Elaine. Uh, yes, Crystal. So, um, thank you, Elaine. Oh, thank you, Kathy. Uh, hey, Dee. Uh, we're just waiting on Rob to come back. Hopefully he can come back um, due to the thing. Due to the East Town of Florida. So why don't we end the show here. Um, you guys all know where Rob is. Um, I want to thank everybody who was on um, my first show tonight with um, Let's Just Talk Paranormal. If you'd like to be a guest on the show and... Um, do the interview like I'm doing, please let me know, and I'd love to have you um, on the show with me to talk. Yeah, I'm going to pick somebody here, and if you'd like to talk a little bit, let's do it. Let's take David. Uh, 
I am inviting David to the to the mix. So he'd like to talk a bit. Hey, David. Hey, what's up? Let me walk out of the room real quick. My dad's got everything up real high. <laughs> what's going on, brother? You doing all right? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I wanted to bring you on to talk a little bit about what you're doing. I noticed you've been lately. So why don't you tell the audience what you've been up to? state of Mississippi, which is actually pretty cool. I mean, we ran across a lot of them. Such a... You there? Eric? Your voice is kind of muffled. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, just a little bit. Okay. Uh, Why don't we hello? try to reconnect with you and see if we'll come back on? Yeah, that's good. Let me go ahead and get some earbuds in where you can hear me a lot better. Hey, Rob. Hey, I don't know why my internet has dead spots in my apartment, so kind of tends no. to come and go. Not a problem. You still have a lot of people waiting for you. Ah, well, I see a lot of them left. These people, well, I see how y'all are. Ten minutes. I, I was going, what, three minutes. You guys were like, yo, I could go for a Pop-Tart. Everyone just <laughs> walked right out. Well, uh, David tried to fill in for you while you were gone. He had a little bit of internet condi conditions too, so that works out. And now all of a sudden, uh, oh, yeah. See, we even got... Pony Augusta Francis, her internet's still going out too. Yep. Kathy stayed. Jen Chris... stayed. Bill Reeves still here. Cody's still here. A lot of people. Kathleen's about to go get a pop tart. So is Celestial. Um, <laughs> but pop tart, I, you know, so let's maybe, maybe bring up pop tarts because I have all I've eaten today. True story is a cookie and a Seven Eleven apple pie. Well, I had garlic knots for dinner tonight, so yeah, I didn't even a, thought about dinner. Yeah, I'm gonna have some dinner shortly. So, um, Rob, let's get back to a little bit what we've been talking about with some of the stuff. Um, do you think you need to have, like, a degree or anything to investigate the paranormal? I think it certainly helps, right? I mean, right. wouldn't it be cool to have a physicist with you or a psych? I mean, I have a degree in psychology, so I think that that helps – or at least I believe so. Some people would say, sure, we've seen you do EVP sessions. You suck. But I think that it helps me try and get into, you know, the mind of, of the person I'm talking to, you know. So, yes, you know, is it required? No. You know, a lot of people said, you know, we should have this national organization of, of paranormal investigators. It's not a bad idea, but, you know, we can't even agree on what equipment to use. So, good luck trying to get us agreed on anything else. One thing that I would suggest is to do a criminal background check on all your team members, right? And so if someone comes and says, I'm going to do a, you know, we're going to help you out with a residential case, say, before we come in your house, here are the criminal background checks on all the members of the team. You know, I, I just think that that's a better idea than just having people wander into your house. But I understand people are, are desperate. You know, I mean, they're desperate for help. So I get that. Do you think that some people should have drug testing? Me personally? Yeah, for, dr for paranormal investigations. Listen, I'm going to set the record straight right now. The only drug I use is Flocka. You know, if it ain't Flocka, it's not for me. Okay, okay. <laughs> now, we, we... Or bath salts. I like Flocka and bath salts, but don't mix them. Boy, you're going to be in trouble. You miss them, mess those together. 
Don't try bath salts, people. Don't try bath salts. Unless, unless you got a little flocka to throw in there. Yeah. That's a party. <laughs> oh, man. Um, let me ask you this. Now, you got stuff coming up, right? Correct? Like um, places that you're going to be at. Um, I got one. Uh, I got one event that I'm doing not this weekend, but the coming weekend, um, and that's really about it. You know, I mean, like I don't really do events anymore. Um, I look for ghosts. You know, I mean, I'll be I'll be honest, because people are like, you know, I I don't do events anymore because I'm against it. No, oh, man, I don't do events anymore because the tickets don't really sell that well. It is what it is. You know, what I mean, like that's that's honest. That's real talk, you know? So I, I also think that people charge way too much. You know, when I do an event, I ask, um, no, Jason, you can't buy no flock at 7-Eleven. It's a South Florida <laughs> thing. Um, but I don't think a, a, events should cost more than going out for dinner and a movie. You know what I mean? Like, if you're talking about, like, 200 bucks for a night out, Oh, man, that's crazy. You know, like, I do events, and people come in there, and they're like, um, I've been investigating the paranormal for 20 years. Now, when I get an EVP, should I? Well, I'm, not, I'm not better than you are because I was on TV. I'm just an investigator. You know what I mean? Right. Okay, so, Kathy, the joke was that Flocka is a really horrible drug that I shouldn't have even made a joke about. Um, that, that for a while was taken over South Florida. So when I was saying, do I do drugs, only Flocka, it was, it was a bad joke. He, does, he doesn't do drugs, guys. Let's just get this no, straight. No, I don't. Here. I actually don't. The only, I, I will tell you the truth. Um, I, have, I have stuff that I take for anxiety. Um, most of it is homeopathic. Um, I don't use any drugs. I don't smoke marijuana. I don't use cocaine. You name it. You can drug test me. In fact, if you have a cup handy, I can try and pee on my phone and see if we can drug test it right now. No. No, no, no. All right, cool. Some of the girls, I'm going to say this because I, I can't believe I'm going to say this. Some of the girls want to see your guns. Like my nine millimeter? No. I got to go upstairs and get it. It's locked up. I got okay, two no, nine millimeters. No, no, no. Your arm. They want to see your oh, arms. Oh, my arms? Yeah. What the hell do they want to see my arms for? I don't know. They, they've seen you've been working out. They want to see the guns. You know what? Yeah. My, my sister gets – somebody get, – uh, my sister gets said, no, they don't. But here, here's what I'll do for you. Y'all ready? Can everyone see? I'm going to do a little – a scene from another show. Here we go. Oh, my God. I think I just got scratched. Yeah, y'all thought I was going to do it, too. Oh, man, I ain't showing you. No, no, there's no sun out. There's no guns out, man. If you want to see guns, go to the gun show because it ain't here. <laughs> that was good. I'll give you credit on that one. Um, now I can't even think what I was going to say. Um, that was I'd like one. to I apologize for my haircut, and I'm going to tell you why. Because for a while, what happened was I went to give myself a haircut and I buzzed like right to the skin right here. So I said, oh, well, what can I do now? So I buzzed all my hair off, right? So now I'm trying to let it grow in more. And this is kind of re the result. I know, it's, I know it's shady as hell, but what can I do, man? Hey, hey mine, any isn't, look, mine isn't yeah. any better. You know what I mean? This, mine this isn't is why any better. I do... This is why I do, you know, phone interviews instead of showing that haircut off. Yikes. <laughs> so, so um, are you going to write any books about your experiences? Um, I cannot write a book about my experiences on Ghost Hunters International. That show is owned by the production company. Um, I could write a book about my experiences on Haunting Australia and all my other experiences. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I will. You know, I do have a book idea that I've been talking to people about, but I want to do something different. You know what I mean? I, like, I've, I've read 
probably almost every commercially available ghost book on the market. And they're all kind of the same. You know, so if I wanted to write a book, like anyone who's seen my Facebook, like I have a different writing style. Like I would want it to be personal and like really, you know, people to get it. And David, to answer your question, um, I actually put together an old school kit that borrowed he heavily from Harry Price, um, talcum powder, bells, string, um, the whole nine, because I think that there's still a lot we can learn from old school equipment, and you can get everything, everything that was in my kit for under 20 bucks. Now, what do you think about, okay, digital recorders, like maybe like this one, first yeah, reel to reel. Like verse reel to reel. Um, I use I personally use digital recorders. Um, it's just so much more convenient. You know, that's just that's just the way I feel about it. What is some of your favorite equipment, Rob? Um, Jason Musgrove just said it. The RDR sixty, Bill Reap seconded, um, spectral gear, a lot of their equipment. Um in reality, when people are, are just getting into ghost hunting, I say the only thing you really need is your cell phone. And why, why the reason I say that is your cell phone's got a flashlight, it's got a video recorder, it's got a camera, it's got a voice recorder. So you got already, just in your phone, you've got a lot of the tools that investigators use. Um, I believe it was Bill Reap that mentioned a compass. A compass is an EMF meter. Most people don't know that, but it is. I remember seeing Peter James use it on In Search Of probably at least 20 years ago. Now, with with some of the equipment that out there, do you think that some of the equipment's overpriced? Um, I couldn't really comment on that unless I built it. And the reason for that is because... I don't know how much the parts going into it is. I don't know how much labor intensive it is. You know what I mean? So somebody could, could build something and I'd say, oh my God, 200 bucks is outrageous, but it, maybe it takes them, you know, 15 hours to build it. I don't know. Now, what do you think of apps on the phone, paranormal apps? I think a lot of them are garbage. Um, I'm currently working. I have, I have a number of apps out there. I listed it if you want to check it out. It's on my Facebook page. Um, Kathy, enjoy your lunch. Um, you know, so it, it, a lot of the apps are junk, and a lot of them can be helpful. Um, one of the apps we have, and someone also asked this question, we have an app that gives a list of prayers of protection. Now, if, if you happen to be Christian, um, it, it doesn't find ghosts for you. But if you didn't bring a Bible with you or what have you, or you don't have prayers memorized, there's a really easy way to just open up an app and read a prayer to yourself, you know, for protection before and after the investigation. Now, that app we actually offer completely free because, you know, if people want it, it's there for the taking. Um, is there a way you can post on my um, Facebook uh, a link to that app so people can get to it? Yeah, um... I can try. I gotta. I always gotta remember. See, the problem I have is, as you can see, this phone is is not that great. Well, you can't see the phone. Let me see if I can take a picture of the phone. Click. Can you see that? That's my phone. Um, nah, my phone's not that great. So it's it's. I've lost a lot of information. So it might take me a while. Hi, Madison. Um. And, and Madison said, basically, all apps are trash, right? No. Yep. A lot of them are, and some of them are not. You know, I've worked myself on apps. So I think there, there's value to be had. And David just said he'll post on his wall if you want a link. Okay. And Kathleen said, my phone looks delicious. Kathleen, it's just the box. It's empty. I already ate it. I got these here. Woohoo! I can't eat those things without salsa. I mean, that's why they named them scoops. That's right. That's right. Now, are you going out for Halloween and where? Um, I don't think so. 
No, no. Man, I'm sorry. That was a quick answer, but nah, I don't think I don't think I'm gonna do. I usually Halloween, I stay home. You know what I mean? Really? That's just not. Yeah, I think people expect it. Like, oh my God, that's my big investigating night. But nah. Okay, let me ask you this: Would you ever go on a Bigfoot hunt? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I was working with um, a Bigfoot investigator, and it just never wound up happening. Um, so, you know, I would do it. I've been on Lake Champlain, you know, waiting to see if Champy was going to pop his head out. Never happened. You know, so never know. Okay, okay. Do you believe in the creature? I, I personally believe in the existence of some sort of large, hairy creature that lives in the woods, yes. Um, I think if people found it, science would be quick to say, oh, yes, that's actually the Prinorphorus whatever. We knew that that might exist all along, even though right now they're saying there's no way it exists. If it did pop out, um, then they would say, oh, yeah, it's not a big deal. Well, see, Crystal here is part of the BFRO, the Finding Bigfoot bunch, and she's part of my team, Haunted in New England. Now, she's done, you know, Bigfoot investigations all over New England and out in Ohio, I believe. And um, you should talk to her about going out on a Bigfoot hunt. Um, I, you were kind of breaking up. I have talked to people, a lot of people, about Bigfoot sightings, UFO sightings, um, Kathleen brings up the Mothman sighting, which I thought was one of the more fascinating cases of all time. Um, I have, I've been to Point Pleasant. I filmed the Chiller special there with uh, Katrina Weidman that people know from Paranormal State and Paranormal Lockdown, um, amongst another, other great team members. I was behind the camera. It's just a great town. Mothman is just a fascinating case. If you haven't, if you haven't read the Mothman prophecies, I highly recommend it. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to wrap it up here, folks, um, tonight. I want to thank Rob. Um, how can people get a hold of you if they want to talk to you some more about Bigfoot or ghosts or even some of it, your it's THR always the same. You know, one of the things I always try and do, even if it's just a thumbs up, um, is is respond to messages on my on my Facebook, even if good night Sam. Um, even if it's just you know like, cause my friends list I don't have a, a fan page and all that crap. That's just not for me. Um, so good night Giuseppe. Um, if you go on my Facebook page and you send me a message, even if you're not my friend, I'll most likely see it and try and get back to you as soon as I can. Okay, thank you, Rob, so much for a wonderful evening. Um, All right, and before, you ready? There you go, guys. There's the guns, Crystal. That's the guns. Bam! Enjoy. Y'all have a great night. Thank you, Rob. Have a great night. All right. Bye now. Okay, thank you. Thank you everybody for tuning in on this tonight and um, if you'd like to be a guest on let's just talk paranormal uh, hit me up and I'll set it up with you guys okay take care god bless and have a safe evening guys